Oh, by the way, uh, if you are like, if your friends aren't here and they signed up for this, like, please send them the link to this uh, because of the administrative link mix up. That was not my fault. <laughs> We'll give it like one more minute. I think like a good number of people are here. And while we're doing that, everyone ponder the following question. Zoom had a cold calling function. Fun. All right, great. Let's get started. Uh, someone needs to answer this question before we move on. What do you think is an advantage counterplan? Plan that solves one of the asset advantages. Yeah, so it tries to solve the affirmative advantages. Why? Um, sorry, what's up? I can hear you. Oh, like to like mitigate AF offense is like, you know, that's pretty. Yeah. Uh, the AF advantage. Uh, what does it also do? It avoids something. Avoids the disads. Yeah, like it avoids the diset, right? Uh, and I'm gonna start off of like with a really basic example to demonstrate what I think is the fundamental principle of advantage counterplans, which is to demonstrate, or uh, sorry, that's not the right word. It's to test whether AF advantages are intrinsic, and that's the key word, to the plan. Now, what do I mean by this? Uh, let's say the plan was hypothetically something around the lines of just like, uh, that Ishan should get Taco Bell for dinner. Uh, and let's say I was the affirmative debater arguing that I should get Taco Bell for dinner, which I would be because I love Taco Bell. And one of you was the negative debater, arguing that I shouldn't get Taco Bell for dinner because you hate life and everything good that comes with it. So I, as the affirmative debater, say, my first advantage is hunger. If Ishan does not get Taco Bell for dinner tonight, uh, he will not have food. He will go hungry. So Ishan getting Taco Bell for dinner tonight is key to Ishan eating dinner, which is key to solve his hunger. Going hungry, hungry is bad because it makes Ishan really, really sad. And he's not good at teaching debate when he's hungry. Uh, what's the problem with this advantage? Someone besides Cade, who's just answered the first few set of questions. Any other food can also solve. Yeah, yeah. So what's, uh, so the argument I'm making in favor of getting Taco Bell, which is like, I need to eat dinner, uh, is not intrinsic to getting Taco Bell for dinner, right? Um, it, it's not like, it's not something that only Taco, getting Taco Bell for dinner can solve. I'm just demonstrating the necessity of eating dinner in the first place. So the counter plan, like, eat literally anything else solves the hunger advantage while avoiding whatever disadvantage you have to me getting Taco Bell, right? So that's what it means to uh, demonstrate the fact that an affirmative advantage is not, not intrinsic to the plan. And that's the uh, same reason. And, and that just means the same thing as solving the AF advantage, right? 
Because if you solve the aff advantage, you're demonstrating that the affirmative plan is not necessary to solve the advantage, which means only the impact to the disadvantages should be weighed in your calculus, um, because advantages that the affirmative have presented are not intrinsic to the plan. Uh, what is an interesting takeaway of this theory of advantage counterplans, which is that the negative should get the test the intrinsicness of affirmative advantages? Like a, an interesting implication to this. Like theory wise, in terms of what the negative can do. Can't the negative just make like multiple counterplans to solve for every like issue the affirmative has just like yeah, I, I think this is a controversial opinion, but I totally think that the negative gets infinite advantage counterplans, infinite conditional advantage counterplans. And, and the reason for this is simple. Uh, the affirmative's job is to prove that the plan is a good idea. Um, they can prove that the plan is a good idea in like lots of ways, right? They can have lots of advantages. Uh, a key negative answer to every advantage is that this is not intrinsic to the plan, right? The plan is not necessary to solve this. Other things could also solve this. You have not actually presented a robust defense of why the plan is necessary. Um, and the negative could be like, you could solve it through doing X and Y and Z. And the reason I think they're conditional is just because the logic argument, which is just like proving the counterplan is bad doesn't prove the app is good. And it's the app burn to prove that the app is good, which means conditionality is just like the logical implication of uh, an argument that demonstrates the affirmative, like the affirmative advantage is not intrinsic. So I think this is good to understand what advantage counterplans truly are at their core, which is like, have you ever been in a lay debate where the other side makes an argument and you're like, hey, this is not a reason to like do the, aft side of the resolution. This is just a reason to reform that thing, right? Like you don't make a counterpoint, but you say that in response to like the aft argument. Has that ever happened to anyone? Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's the same thing. It's the same thing as reading a counterpoint. They're, they're both making the same argument. Um, so like, I totally think you get infinite advantage counterplans conditionally. Um, like, I think there's ways to win condo with the aft that are like different from like a just like a pure argument theory standpoint, but I think from the like, just like the like the core tenet of negation theory and like how arguments work, the negative gets infinite advantage counterparts that are conditional. Um, great. So I'm glad we covered the uh, just like basic gist of the theory behind advantage counterplans, and now we're going to chat a little bit more about like the debate specifics. So we're going to go through what the common AF answer should an advantage counterplan to be, uh, and I think that there are five. Um, one is a solvency deficit. Um, and let's, let's, uh, for the sake of example, we're going to do like the plan that's just like get Taco Bell and then the counter plan that's just like eat a salad and then the disad that's just like Taco Bell is unhealthy <laughs> and you've already gained, you know, 10 pounds in quarantine. You shouldn't do any more. Um. Yeah, so that's the disad. Great. Um, the first argument the app should make is a solvency deficit. Why is the plan necessary to solve the advantage? Why does nothing else solve the advantage? Um, the answer in this case is like pretty simple. Nothing else makes me as happy as Taco Bell does. So if I have like a happiness advantage to my plan, uh, no salad is gonna solve that happiness advantage, which is like not true. I like salad too. Salad is really tasty. Um, but you know, you get the point, right? Which is just like, you need an advantage that the counterplan does not solve. You need to demonstrate that the plan only solves it and not the counterplan. Uh, the second is a permutation. Um, I think this is like totally not super relevant in this example uh, because the, the counter, like, because you only could eat one dinner. I guess the app should, could technically say like, permutation, get like one burrito and then eat a side salad. Uh, which I think is fine because the plan just says you have to get Taco Bell. It doesn't specify how much Taco Bell you have to eat. Um, and the counter plan just says eat a salad. So I think that this is totally a legitimate permutation where you're just like, fine, I'll get like a chalupa and then I'll like have a good salad too. Um, so that's good. And then uh, you argue that the permutation solves the advantage. Um, and an interesting thing you could say uh, with the permutation is that it solves the net benefit. And I don't think people consider this argument enough. And I think I want to spend like three minutes really uh, chatting about it. One sec. Um, yeah, uh, as someone just asked me privately, can I just say permutation, get a salad from Taco Bell? Yeah, I totally think you can. Because all the plan specifies is that I should go to Taco Bell for dinner. It does not specify what I'm going to get. Um, the negative could then say, you know, normal means uh, Ishan going to Taco Bell by like, you know, 10 years of proven history and empirical evidence means he's going to get two chalupas and, you know, uh, Baja Blast, but, you know, whatever, we're going to, 
Okay. Um, so the solves the net benefit arg. I think this is a really good arg. And in this instance, it looks something like this. The permutation solves the net benefit or shields the link to the net benefit because A, it solves the happiness advantage by giving Ishan one chalupa, which makes him happy enough because he gets some tasty Taco Bell, but it avoids the health unhealthiness DA uh, because Ishan eats a salad too. And that's pretty healthy. So Ishan has like a little bit of the happiness uh, and a little bit of the healthiness. And like, uh... okay. someone's asking me a question. Give me just a second. Uh, to whoever just asked me, we're going over how to answer advantage counter plans. Uh, Adib, what's up? Um, so like you say that you'll get like one chalupa and then the salad, but um, doesn't that include like a severance perm since you're only doing a part of like the Taco Bell stuff? No, because the plan is just like go to Taco Bell. Um, the plan doesn't say go to Taco If the plan was like go to Taco Bell and get two burritos, uh, then it's severance. Um, but the plan is just go to Taco Bell, right? So I think going to sense. like getting getting one chalupa is is, an ex is a perfectly fine example of going to Taco Bell, um, and the reason it solves the net benefit is because like uh, I do the healthy thing too, and although I link a little bit to the disad right, like I, I still ate like one unhealthy thing. I didn't eat like a full meal at Taco Bell, so I don't link to as big of the disad right, which means the happiness advantage outweighs the risk of the disad. So a permutation doesn't have to shield the entire link. But what it can do is shield a sufficient amount of the link um, in order for the aft to outweigh. Uh, so that's why like perms are great uh, and solving the net benefit is good. The next thing you want to say against an advantage counter plan is that it links to the net benefit. Um, and in this instance, it would be like, dude, like, like the salads at restaurants, like there's like 600 calories of dressing on them too. Like they're really unhealthy. So your argument is just like the counter plan links is to the DA just as much as the DA links to the plan or like, you know, the counter plan links to the disad enough uh, so that the disad is not really a reason to vote negative um, because the counter plan links to it too. Links to the net benefit is I think never like, like the AF usually forgets to make this argument and you should always make this argument against a advantage counter plan because otherwise um, if it doesn't, then they win that they did, the counter plan completely avoids the DA. And that's a rough for you because then that's like puts them in a pretty good spot. Um, fourth, you can win offense against the mechanism of the counter plan, um, which is just like eating a salad with, is bad. Um, you can be like, you know, the restaurant to get a salad is farther away from than, from you than Taco Bell is. So like you would use more gas money um, and it would be, it would take longer, et cetera. So this is just reasons why the counter plan is actively a bad idea. Uh, but a solvency deficit is reason why the counter plan doesn't solve the case. Um, lastly, you need a theory argument, some argument that's just like conditionality is bad, um, like some objection to the counter plan, it's not realistic, et cetera. Like sometimes you don't need a theory argument, but like the vast majority of the time you should, like you would always benefit from making some type of theory argument. Um, great. Uh, the next thing I wanna talk about is going for an advantage counter plan. Do, 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 do. Actually, any questions on what's happened so far? Wait, what was the fifth uh, argument you can make against counter plans? Theory. By the way, y'all can see the whiteboard, right? Yes. Great, great. Um, and the theory could look like conditionality is bad, um, you know, alt agent fiat is bad, other stuff like that. Someone was asking a question. I heard someone. Um, okay. Uh, so the um, the uh, someone asked me to re-explain the part where you make offense against the counter plan. Uh, that just means you're saying the counter plan is actively a bad idea. Um, not that you're saying that the counter plan doesn't solve the case, but like the the thing that the counter plan does is bad. So in this instance, it'd be like the salad restaurant is really far away because Ishan lives in the deep south and there's only like one salad restaurant in the entire state of Mississippi. Um, so it would be really far and it's really expensive. Um, yeah. Now, um, other thoughts, actually we're gonna do a little bit more of like app strategy against advantage counter plans. Um, what do y'all think you should do when the advantage counter plan like, uh, definitively solves the case. 
What's left? To be clear, I don't think you should ever write an app where an advantage counterplan definitively solves your case. If that's true, then you should switch to a different app. Um, but because uh, that means you've written an app where none of your advantages are actually reasons to do the plan, which is like kind of rough. Um, but what do you do in the case where the negative predicts like a new big, like seven plank advantage counterplan against you? And you're like, wow, this really solves all my advantages. Uh, what can you do? Can you say that just because your their CP solves doesn't mean that your app is bad? Because like you just have to prove why your app is good. Yeah, I think you can make that argument, and that's just like a permutation, right? Which you're like, you can do both of these things to get double solvency. Um, the issues uh, with it, um, the 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 issues with that is just like, but if you concede that none of the reasons to do the plan are unique to the plan, right? You could get the benefit in any other way. Um, then whatever disad they have to your plan, uh, like pretty much automatically outweighs the case, right? Um, someone says a good answer, which I think is one, uh, you want disads to this counter plan. So let's say your AF was like, uh, you should, um, like your AF was like something to do with global warming, right? It was like, we should uh, pass this new emissions regulation, right? Um, and then the counter plan was like, we should pass a carbon tax. I think the carbon tax like solves a lot more warming than your app does. Um, the, the way you could uh, argue against that is you could be like, look, a carbon, and, and that, if they're disad against your, uh, against your app is like politics, you could just say like, look, the carbon tax is much, much worse for that, right? Like the carbon tax is much more politically contentious. Um, so the counter plan actually links more to politics than the app does. Um, the second thing you can win if the counter plan solves like a big chunk of your internal links or your impact is just like win a separate internal link. So let's say I have a warming advantage and my uh, advocacy is about like ecosystems and like, like protecting coral reefs. The negative wins a carbon tax and wins that solves like the vast majority of emissions. I could still have the internal link about like coral reefs going down or like, you know, biodiversity loss there, that's an internal link the counter plan doesn't solve, which means even if the counter plan solves like warming writ large, uh, the app solves this internal link and the impact of that internal link is X, Y, Z. So you have to isolate which internal links the counter plan doesn't solve. Um, but that kind of cheats because the hypothetical is that the counter plan solves the whole case. I just wanted to mention that it's important and useful to um, isolate the internal links that you think the counter plan doesn't solve, even if the counter plan solves the vast majority of your impact. There's, um, one other thing, like someone in the chat says wreck the disad. I think this is a bit misleading, but the right direction to go. What's the problem with just like absolutely destroying the disad and winning that it's really dumb and very unlikely in this situation? Isn't it even that like a risk of offense is still enough? Because if you solve 100% of case, just like the fact that it exists is enough. Yeah, totally. Like the, the, the fact that the advantage counter plan zaps the case, like entirely zeroes the case. Um, means that like uh, a low risk of the disad is still a net benefit. Now, I think you can, like some disads are so bad where you can been like, you can flip that and just be like, this disad is zero risk because it's really dumb. And any chance the advantage counter plan doesn't solve the whole case is a reason to vote affirmative. But in the vast majority of instances, if you're up against a counter plan that's really, really tough to answer at the like solvency level, you should just win offense against the disad. Um, so you need to win that the disad is like the disad is actually a reason to vote for you. And this is good because what is the negative said in the one and C about the relationship between their counter plan and their disad? It doesn't link, right? Yeah, that the counter plan avoids the disad, right? Like the counter plan doesn't cause whatever disad thing this says is bad to happen. So the negative is spotting you that claim. So if you straight turn the disad by winning a link turn, like you're like the plan actually is super popular and it like boosts everyone's political capital, or you impact turn the disad by saying that the impact of the disad is actually really, really, really good. Um, like, okay, sorry, whoever's just saying in the chat, I do not understand what the question is. So um, if you want to clarify for me, uh, but um, I just want to let you know that I, I do not understand your latest message. Um, like, um, so like if that's the case and the negative is spotting you that the counter plan does not like relate to the disad in any way, then offense against the disad automatically becomes a reason to prefer the affirmative versus the counter plan, right? Um, what are ways to straight turn and win offense against a disad?
before I chat about that, uh, any questions on this stuff so far? Um, Could you explain the rec, the DAs again? Yeah, sure. I'm about to get into that, but it just means win offense against one of the disads. Um, the second argument was just that you win um, that the counter plan doesn't solve part of your case, uh, which is a little bit cheating because the hypothetical was the counter plan does solve all of your case. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to talk about what a straight turn is right now. Um, someone answered the question correctly, which is that you can non-unique the disad and win a link turn. So let's say the disad is this. The uniqueness, um, Ishan's health is high now. The link, Taco Bell is really bad for Ishan's health. The impact, um, great. Um, so this is the disad. And the plan is like, uh, like, yeah, go to Taco Bell, right? Um, you could straight turn the disad in two ways. You could either say, you could either win a link turn that says that, no, 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 the opposite of the link happens. Like um, Taco Bell is like really, really good for you. It's really healthy. That's kind of a lie, but like that's an example of a link turn in this instance. Um, and the other thing you could do is you could impact turn the disad, which is by saying that like this impact is actually really, really good. Um, for some reason, Ishan being unhealthy and sad is good, maybe because he like deserves it. I don't know. Um, but the point is you can win offense against the disad by link turning it or impact turning it. Uh, what can you not do in a link and impact turn both. between link and impact? Yeah, you can't do both uh, because if you did both, like, you would say that Taco Bell makes Ishan healthy, but you've also said that Ishan being healthy is bad. So that's important to think about. I know that's like pretty basic, but I wanted to chat a little bit about the like sort of like um, the technical aspects of winning an impact turn um, that I don't think people sort of pay attention to as much as they should. Um, you want to win impact defense alongside your impact turn. And you want to be really like clever about it. Um, and so this is like, let's say the negative reads an impact that is like, um, the act causes the economy to go down and then economic decline causes war. Uh, DDEV is like an impact turn to economic decline, right? It's like economic decline is necessary to solve ecological destruction. Um, the part you have to concede to get access to an impact turn is that you make the economy decline. But coupled with your impact turn, you should always read impact defense, right? Um, so you should always say, no, economic decline does not cause war. No, economic decline is not that bad. And then make your argument for like why it's really good. The second thing you can do is you can define the scope of the impact um, based on the internal link. And what I mean by that is very simple. Uh, the impact versus the impact turn, uh, you have to like think about what, what level of the impact the link actually accesses. So let's say the disad is like a war powers disad. It says that the AF is a congressional overreach into the executive's war powers authority on, on like some topic about like executive authority. And that's really bad because executive authority is really good. Like it's great for fighting terrorism um, and you got to beat the terrorists. If they're bad, they'll kill everyone. Um, an example of an impact turn would be the AF saying that like, look, congressional restrictions aren't bad. The executive is nuts and we should constrain the executive with congressional restrictions by statute. Uh, a clever AF framing argument would be like, look, the link does not get the negative to their impact, which is like war powers being shredded, because the link does not cause complete destruction of war powers. All the link causes is just like a slight increase in congressional restrictions on war powers. However, the link does access the impact turn, because what it does prove is that like uh, some level of congressional restrictions are necessary. So all you need to access the impact turn is just like a little bit increase in congressional restrictions. But in order for the negative to get their, their impact, they need to like win that congressional restrictions go completely overboard on the executive. Um, so does that sort of make sense on like how to um, do both 
like link work and an impact turn at the same time and define your impact turn based on the level of the link that is being won. Um, for example, in this instance, it would be like, uh, sorry, let me explain this real quick before we ask your question. Um, in this instance, it would be like the negative would get up and respond to this impact turn of like Ishan being unhealthy is good because he's a terrible person. But it's just like, look, Taco Bell doesn't make Ishan perpetually unhealthy and sad. Um, like you need a lot more uh, like unhealthiness to do that. But Taco, Del, Taco Bell does make him like short term unhealthy, right? Like his stomach will rumble and he'll have like digestive problems. Um, so that's still bad. But so the app doesn't get access to their impact turn based on the link, but we get access to our impact based on the link. So you, you have to define the scope of your impact in terms of your link. Hi everyone, my Wi-Fi crashed, which is lovely. I love it when that happens. What was the last thing I said that y'all, you know, heard? Like you need to assess how much the link accesses their impact when comparing impact turn, uh, link turns. When comparing impact turn versus impacts, you need to right. access, yeah. yeah, you need to compare like how much the link actually accesses. Does that make sense to the person that was about to ask a question? I just have a question. So if we read link defense and then an impact turn, how does it not just like make our impact like lesser? Yeah, because you're saying that uh, you're reading link defense uh, to the disad getting to their impact, but you're not reading link defense to the disad getting to your impact. So to clarify, if you read general link defense, you will do what you're talking about. So for example, on the economy DA, if you say no link, the plan doesn't crash the economy, and then you read DDEV, like obviously the negative just concedes the no link and it's just like, all right, great, the plan doesn't crash the economy so you don't get your impact turn. But in, in terms of other disads, you can do link debating uh, by saying that you're no linking their impact from the internal link, but your impact turn still links to their internal link, right? Does that like, is that concept like make sense or am I being confusing? Like, is there, you want me to use another example to explain it? Okay, so some people are giving me a thumbs up. Um, great, someone's asked for another example. Um, wonderful. So, uh, I think I'm done. Okay, I got it. Um, let's say the AF is decrease sanctions on Iran. And then, oh boy. The disad is uh, decreasing sanctions makes Iran very aggressive and mean because they're aggressive and mean. Um, the AF can simultaneously say that one, no link, um, sanctions, or sorry, sorry. Uh, if the AF was impact turning this and saying Iranian aggression was good. And let's say the negatives argument is that like this causes Iran uh, to like first strike Israel. Because they're real mean. Okay, great. So the AF is gonna impact turn Iranian aggression, right? And so the AF says two things, one, the app says Iranian aggression is good because it creates deterrence in the region, i.e. Uh, the Western powers in Israel will like screw with Iran less. And it actually stabilizes the region um, because if Iran acts aggressively, everyone will calm down because they're really afraid of Iran. Kind of nuts, but like for the sake of the example, let's say that's what the app says. The app can simultaneously say um, the like removing sanctions, they can simultaneously say that Iran aggression does not equal an Israel, Israeli first strike. Um, because sanctions, oops. Um, 
aren't that big, right? They are very small. So what the what the app is saying is that um, the link does not get the negative to their impact, but the link gets the affirmative to their impact turn, right? Does that make sense? Does that example help, right? Yeah. About how you can do link defense and impact turn to this ad? Great. And, and the reason you can do link defense and impact turn to this ad is because you're actually reading defense to an internal link, um, not, not the link. Uh, but that's like, you don't like, that's just like a, a very, very granular interpretation of this, which you don't really need to think about very much. I'm just sort of explaining the scope by which you can discuss this. Okay, great. Are there any questions so far? Um, okay, great. Uh, now we're going to talk about the structure of the 2NR on an advantage counter plan plus a disad. First question, what do you think you should start with? Advantage counter plan. Uh, why? Because like it sets you up to like talk about why all of the ask offense is like functionally irrelevant since you've like solved the advantage and then it gives you like really good ground to like say that a risk of a disad outweighs basically everything. Sure, I, I think that framing is fine. Uh, so when you put something first, what you're basically saying is that like, um, I, I want to spend the most time on this. I, I can spend less time on the other thing. Um, so what happens if you overcover the counter plan and undercover the disad? It's still fine, right? Because like you're going for a, a sufficiency framing. Um, we'll get there in a second, but. Uh, what happens if you really screw up on the disad? Then, like, you might concede some kind of straight turn, which basically means that all of the work on the counter plan is irrelevant if, like, doing the counter plan is bad. Yeah. Um, I actually think you should start with the disad. Um, and the reason for that is just super simple. Uh, it's the reason you win, right? Like, like you want to be winning a sufficient chunk of the DA that outweighs the case regardless of whether the advantage counter plan is present. Um, by the way, someone who just asked me whether you read the advantage counter plan on case or as a separate off, you read it as a separate off case position. Um, but the parallel I was using earlier uh, in like this like traditional debate uh, where you like say it on the case, it just demonstrates what the logic of the argument says, right? Because the logic of the argument is just that like the advantage that the affirmative read is not intrinsic to doing the plan. Um, but I guess in like debate, circuity sense you would put it on a separate sheet a separate off um yeah so i think you should start with the disad um and i think this is true because it's the main piece of offense and you should win the, the you should win a big chunk of the da first and then you can go to the advantage counter plan um and start talking about the case um the first thing you should do when you get to the counter plan and i guess like the what do you do on a disad is a separate lecture uh, but we can talk about that if we have time at the end if people are curious um, but the first thing you should do is you should have like a quick overview. And this is not like an argument overview. This is just like a, I'm going to stop for a second and I'm going to like explain to you what the counter plan does. Because a lot of times in debates, like negative debaters are really bad about actually explaining what the counter plan does to the judge after they've read like a 500 word text at like 500 words per minute, which is kind of nuts um, and deeply, deeply confusing. Um, so you should totally just be like, look, here's what it does. Uh, yeah. And then that overview should then include like a, it does solve the case, right? Um, and you can put solves the case on the line by line too. So you can have like a top level why it solves the case. And then a lot of your solves the case can be on the line by line where the AF made the solvency deficits. So like if the AF's number two on the counter plan is doesn't solve the happiness advantage, you can just put the argument for why it solves the happiness advantage like on the one AR number two. Um, two, uh, spend time on arguments that are bigger threat threats. So like, 
permutation do both not as big of a threat because if you win the disad links to the app like you just say that the permutation links to the net benefits so there's no reason for you to spend more like uh for using more than spend like 10 to 15 seconds on the perm because your basic argument is just like bro it like links to the net benefit like yeah the perm is theoretically true but not in terms of like ah uh, they're like but it's not net beneficial it's not preferable um yeah uh and then so so like you should um so like if, if they have solvency deficits that are based in like um, one AC evidence, like you should uh, like try to read that evidence in prep time and have like a very clear organized section. that's like, they say that we don't solve this internal link. Their Jackson evidence sets the threshold for this internal link at X, Y, Z. The counter plan does solve this because of X, Y, Z. Um, so you definitely want to have like a really robust solvency explanation, especially if they're like, um, like ba making solvency deficits uh, on the basis of their 1AC evidence. Um, yeah. So those are, I think, the thoughts on like what the advantage counterplan 2NR has. Um, I don't think there's a theory argument that's super persuasive against like, uh, besides like conditionality. Um, so I think that like other theory arguments, you should spend like maybe a minute to a minute and a half on if, if they're well-developed. If they're like one-liners, then like 30 seconds on them especially if they're stupid. And I think the main piece of offense against theory is just like the argument I explained at the very beginning of the lecture. That's just like, look, they test the intrinsicness of F arguments and that's a necessary negative argument. Um, Adib, what's up? Um, I forgot what I was going to say, so I'll get back to you on it. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, just raise your hand again or PM it to me. Uh, yeah, great. The next thing I wanted to talk about was a word Brian just said, um, which is sufficiency framing. Uh, can someone tell me uh, what they think sufficiency framing is? Um, isn't it just saying that enough of the AF? Sorry, Shruti? Yeah, isn't it just saying that it solves enough of the AF, like 90% of it, so that you don't need to solve all of it because your DA outweighs? Yeah, so um, your disad outweighs uh, the solvency deficit, right? Um, I think that, like, this is like a like the first level of this argument. Um, I think the second level of this argument is that if the AF can't quantify a solvency deficit, the solvency deficit rounds down to zero. Um, and let's be real clear about this. So the AF is like N subsidies for fossil fuels, right? And it has like um, like a renewables advantage and a warming advantage, whatever. The negative counter plan is just like a laundry list of things to do to solve warming. The AF is like, but the counter plan doesn't get rid of fossil fuels and they contribute to emissions. But the negative has like a bunch of stuff in their counter plan that solves all of this. The negative sufficiency framing argument is the AF has not quantified what the difference between the AF and the counter plan is. They've just sort of hinted at it, which means if the difference is like if the counterplan solves enough of the case, you should just presume it basically solves the case. Um, which means there basically there's no quantifiable impact to the difference between the AF and the counterplan, but there is a quantifiable disad. So it, it's like one step further beyond the like disad outweighs the marginal difference between the AF and the counterplan. It's that like marginal difference should be rounded down to zero which is what sufficiency framing says. Okay, someone asked a question, how do you prep against multi-plank advantage counter plans? Um, well, in my opinion, you should just write advantages that are very intrinsic to your plan. So on the military aid topic, like our AF was like end military aid to Saudi Arabia and that stopped Saudi Arabia doing the war in Yemen. Um, there was like very little advantage counter plan um, that avoided any disad that actually solved the war in Yemen. Because we just had evidence that was just like, our guns are being used in the war in Yemen. Um, so uh, other, other ways to, so I think you should just cleverly think about writing your AF uh, and then you can have answers to the vast majority of advantage counter plans. Like the solvency deficit to any warming advantage counter plan on the fossil fuel subsidies topic was just like emissions, right? Like. No counter plan solved emissions without stopping fossil fuel subsidies. Um, so someone tell me the definition of sufficiency framing.
uh, if the affirmative can't quantify what the specific solvency deficit is, then it is effectively nothing and the DA outweighs. Yeah, it's just lack of a quantifiable solvency deficit should be rounded down to zero. Um, I think Hannah briefly raised their hand, but if you didn't mean to, that's totally cool and oh, you don't have to sorry. say something. I oh, didn't. no worries. Okay. Oh, no, yeah. I was no, no. basically going to say that. I'm good. Okay, yeah, no worries. I just saw you raise your hand and then it went down again really, really quickly. So I was just make, didn't want to make sure I ignored you or missed your question. Um, but great, yeah. Awesome, thank you, Uh Great, so I think that that is the um, like basics of advantage counterplans. The last thing I'm gonna say is just like, advantage counterplans are so underused in LD. Like in my opinion, against a lot of policy apps or a lot of like apps in general, you should just have like a, a sheet of paper where you just like and like like an off case position where you just like throw in just like all of the advantage counterplans on the planet. So um, let me demonstrate this. Uh, um, so uh, does anyone remember the? Did any everyone did enough people debate the nuclear weapons topic that was just this past Jan Feb? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there was an app about India and Pakistan that like the debate drills people read. So like um, Rex Tage, if you know them or like ever have interacted with them. Um, and it had like a lot of internal links, right? Like it had this, it was just like, there are like seven reasons why India and Pakistan are going to go to war now. It was like the nuclear submarines are really messed up. Like there's a deterrence posture, like they'll counterforce each other, et cetera. And one of the disads I was going for in a demo debate or like a practice debate I was doing for a drill was about like how nukes are key to deter China. I had an advantage counterplan page that looks something like this. Uh, India and Pakistan should, it's not, that's, that means solvency, not should, or ought to or whatever, uh, not counterforce each other. Uh, stop using nuclear subs. Stop modernizing new weapons. Uh, ban hypersonics, which is just like a very fast type of missile. Um, I forgot what else was there. Uh, oh yeah, pledge eternal peace was in there somewhere. Um, and just like a, like 10 other different things, right? And the reason this, this works is because what you should do is you just look through all of the AF evidence for their internal links uh, in their advantage. And if you can just like fiat the internal link, just like do it. Um, I've, I, I cannot like count how many times I've seen an affirmative where I'm just like this entire affirmative is zeroed by like an entirely analytic advantage counterplan. Do, do people realize like why this is strategic? Wait, and you can like read these without any cards, right? Just like say oh, the counterplan. Yeah, yeah you should. On. Yeah, you should just say it. Um, uh, yeah. So three things. So three questions I want to uh, address. One, when I say fiat the internal link, I just mean that like if the affirmative is like. India and Pakistan should get rid of their nukes because nuclear submarines in the status quo are likely to like bump into each other um, and like cause an accident. Instead of saying like, get rid of nukes, your counterplan should just be like, India and Pakistan should get rid of their nuclear submarines. Um, and so if the AF's internal link is like nuclear submarines, just fiat the internal link. Um, similarly, if the AF has like an advantage about like allied cooperation, right? Like on this topic, it's like sanctions harm our allies. Uh, and it creates allied non-cooperation. Allied non-cooperation, which mean, means we won't pass this treaty. The counterplan can just be like, pass the treaty, um, right? Uh, so uh, I think that you can like fiat the internal links is what I mean by that. Second question, someone asked, do you need a solvency advocate for each plank of the counterplan? Nope, but the AF authors are your solvency advocate because you're fiating their internal links. Um, if you ever need an answer to like solvency advocate theory. Um, I mean, like, I think smart, just like counter plans are like very, very good and should be utilized significantly more. 
Um, and to the last person that PM'd me asking you to explain it again, did this like re-explanation of what I mean by fiat the internal link help enough? Like you can PM me and tell me if it did or it didn't. And if it didn't, like just be like, hey, do it again. Um, Wait, so I have a question on the example, like the like military aid, let's say. For like yeah. the, the Saudi Arabia, why couldn't an advantage CP just be like Saudi Arabia should like end the war on Yemen? Just like that. Uh, because it's a different agent than the plan and definitely uh, theoretically okay. illegitimate. Yeah. It, okay. Yeah. Right. So that's why that app was good, right? Because it like, um, uh, like it, it depended on the actions of an external actor that you couldn't fiat. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, someone asked like, well, if you advantage counterplan all of these things, then what's the disad? Uh, the disad is if like you're like nukes are key to deter China. Sorry, like India's nukes are key to deter China. Um, like India still has ICBMs and stuff. Um, so I guess there's like some risk of the case if like the AF wins that like they'll use those against each other. Um, but your whole point is all of the random internal links in the affirmative just like go away. Um, and then the only the thing the only thing that matters is just like this external disset you have to like Chinese deterrence, which is why this advantage counterplan was strategic because it did things that would definitely link to the net benefit if my disad was about like India and Pakistan like deterring each other because like how could they deter each other if they like pledged to go to like pledged peace right um, and uh, um, so. Uh, like, like um, then the disset had to be external. Uh, all right, so gonna go answer some questions. Um, great. Uh, someone asked like, why couldn't you just perm the advantage counter plan? Uh, you could, but the problem is that it links to the net benefit because your net benefit is you need to keep nukes to deter China. And the counter plan just solves like, uh, the India-Pakistan part of that. Someone said this only works with Indo-Pakistan plan texts. It's like, no, it just works with any AF where they have a bunch of internal links that are disconnected to the plan. So you advantage counter plan through them. Um, uh, what if they say that peace is unlikely? Like that's what fiat is. Like I think disarmament is also unlikely um, in the real world. So the advantage counter plan works. Um, I, yeah, I think that the, the advantage counter plan typically has to be the actor in the AF. Um, like if you're, at, if you're, if you're using an agent counter plan, like the theory debate is different. Um, so like you could use an agent counter plan, uh, but you could like, like, but that's a different lecture. Um, so, so sorry, someone just asked like, does the advantage counter plan have to have the same actor as the affirmative? Like, I think if you're using the same actor and like you're doing an advantage counter plan, it's like perfectly legitimate. If you use a different agent, like you're gonna get into some like other things. Um, yeah, um, yes, that's why I think advantage counter plans are useful. Um, I hope I've answered any of your questions. If you're still a little unclear on why it's useful to just like solve the whole case, um, in this manner, or like try to solve large portions of the case like this, PM me again. If I've missed your question, PM me. I'll give like two minutes for everyone to do that if they want to. Someone watching like television? Get it then. Uh, okay, so no one's asked another question. That's lovely. I'll give it just like a couple more seconds if I, I've like cut you off a little too early on this. Um, great. Cool. Uh, for the last, oh wait, questions, they came in, great. 
Um, what about a process counter plan that solves the advantage? Uh, would it still link to the disad? Um, yeah, like I think that like if it depends on the disad, right? Like hopefully you've constructed your disad in a way where it doesn't link to the advantage counter plan, but sometimes like it might. So you should be careful about that. Um, someone asks if an AF case is like, if the AF case advantage is like humanitarian aid is good and the Iran doesn't have the supplies, can the negative advantage CP just be the US should offer humanitarian aid? Yeah, like perfectly good example of what an advantage counter plan looks on this topic. And this is like a good debate uh, because sometimes the Iran apps have advantages that are just like, Iran's healthcare system is bad. Sanctions are preventing them um, from like going to uh, like solve their health crisis from like food, water, et cetera. And the counter plan can just be like, you know, give them all that stuff. Uh, but the AF answer would probably be like, our cards are about medical innovation and health innovation and like desalination and stuff. And so Iran needs access to like external markets for any of that to happen, which is why only removing secondary sanctions solves. So the app should have an advanced answer to like, just like the we'll give Iran water counter plan um, and have internal links that do not get solved by just giving Iran water. Um, someone asks, can you do the advantage CP without cards? Like, yeah, if your advantage CP is really intuitive, like if the app is like, we need to do the plan. So this policy, like other bill passes and your counter plan is just like fiat that the bill passes. Yeah, um, you can totally just like, do that, um, but um, you probably need cards if your advantage counter plan is like a little more like substantive and like it's a little more questionable whether it solves the case or not. And you probably want some evidence backing it up. Someone asks, couldn't the opponent make solvency deficits against the CP? Totally, you should answer them. That's like what's the uh, what the counter plan versus uh, AF debate is about. Okay, thoughts on building files. We're going to talk about disads. We're going to talk about counter plans. Okay, for disads, um, let's say we're going to take like like politics, I guess, or like um. No, let's go with the Iran disad that's in the like um the like camp file. So you want a like a one and C section, that's just like a a basic shell of the disad, like a uniqueness card, a link argument that's like very generic uh, and then the internal link and impact. Um, and then you want a section that's like links. And then that where you have like other links. Um, and underneath that you can have like A2, like one AR, no links. Um, and then you wanna have a section that's like uniqueness. Uh, and you want to be constantly cutting updates for uniqueness if the count if like the disad is something that requires it. Um, like if it's like a if it's like Iran's economy is low now, plan boosts Iran's economy. You need to make sure you're updated on whether Iran's economy is actually low. And then you just need to have like defense of your impact. Underneath all of this, there should be like a section that's like A2F answers. Um, I think there's one thing missing from this file. Can anyone point out to me what it is? Something should be right here. Yep, uh, Shreya got it right. It's the extensions. Um, you just need a section that's like to an art overview. Uh, and this should just like explain what the gist of the disad is. Um, and like have like that like sort of to an art overview okay. thing. And the reason I think you need this is because, and I'll repeat this a lot, or I'm gonna say it once, but I hopefully will have to say it again. The 2NR is not the same thing as a 2NC in policy. Um, like the 1NC argument needs to be substantially developed and the 2NR should be doing a lot of effective line by line but should not be creating substantially new arguments. Um, so I think that you should have like a, a good extension of the dissent right now. And this is just like a thesis level explanation. So on top of the Iran DA at the top, you would be like, removing secondary sanctions is a significant boost to Iran's economy which enables them to pursue hegemony across the Middle East. E like the economy is the key internal link um, because Iran is going to always be aggressive no matter what. So only removing the economic ability to do aggressive things solves. One AR1 is uh, uniqueness, economy low now, or like economy high now, uh, one, two, three, right? Um, so that that's like the type of overview you want on the disad. Um, some people say uh, that on every issue where the one AR reads a card, 
you should read two X plus one cards, which is just like X is the number of cards the 1AR read. So if the 1AR reads one card, you should read three in the 2NR. Um, I don't like love this. I think it could probably just be like two X, um, but it basically just depends on how good their card is versus how good your card is. So you should only read a card when it's like really worth it. And your 2NR cards should be like a highlight to be fairly short and the like big good highlighted cards should be in the 1NC. Um, and I think that the 2NR is actually where you do a less, like a lot less like 2NC policy style card reading and a lot more like e explanation and evidence comparison and like, and this is really important, like spin, right? Like you want to be like controlling the narrative on your disad um, and like really explaining why the link is stronger than the link turn or like, like why your link is the key thing that enables Iranian aggression and doing that type of explanation. Um, and like calling back to your best evidence, which you should have definitely put in the one and see. Any questions on this so far? I'll wait like a couple seconds to let questions come in. Um, uh, someone asked me to explain the two in our overview thing again. Basically, you should just have like a, a thesis, like if you're writing a thesis statement for an essay, you should just like have that as uh, something you read at the top of the dissad to explain what the dissad says. Um, okay. Let's move on to what the counterplan file looks like. I think it's like a one and C header with like texts, like potential texts of the counter plan, uh, generic solvency cards. Um, the Then there's like a solvency section where you have like, uh, like specific solvency cards. Um, and, and those get put in the one and C if you're reading the app against a specific plan. Um, and then you have a section that, and this section has like A2 solvency deficits. Then you have like a, a perm block, like whether the counterplan competes or not, like just some basic definitions and theory arguments there. Um, and then you have a like, does it link to the net benefit or not? So like, does it avoid politics? Um, does it avoid like, you know, scaring the businessmen? Like, does it avoid the economy disadvantage? Um, underneath the perm, uh, here's something that's really important. Uh, you need to make sure that your link arguments apply to not just the affirmative, but also to the permutation. Uh, you need to make sure that you have a link argument that applies to the combination of the counterplan and the affirmative, and not just the affirmative in a vacuum. Um, so for example, uh, this, is not an, this is an agent counterplan, but I want to talk about it anyway. Let's say the counterplan is that the 50 states should do the affirmative, right? And the, so the affirmative is like the federal government should ban the death penalty, whatever, right? The negative counterplan is that the 50 states should ban the, ban the death penalty. Um, and then the negative, re, it's a federalism disad that says that um, the affirmative is federal overreach. Uh, if the federal government mandates that the states do something, i.e. banning the death penalty, then that expands their federal power um, and that's bad. Okay, cool. The problem with this is that what if the AF makes the permutation as follows? Perm, have the federal government ban the death penalty and do the counter plan, which is have all of the states ban it. Uh, that shields the link to the federalism disad because none of the states are disagreeing with the, de with, the, with the federal government, right? Like perm, have all of the states comply and coordinate with the federal government to ban the death penalty is definitely not a, a link to the federalism DA. Uh, definitely doesn't link to the federalism DA because it doesn't have the federal government mandate anything that the state should do. It just has everyone do it at once of their own volition. So you need to make sure your link argument is actually linking to the perm. Like you need to make sure you have link arguments that explain why the perm links to the disad, not just the disad itself. Okay. And then I think you get the bottom, you can have some like theory blocks.
Oh, sorry, this is net benefit. And this says, does it avoid politics? Does it avoid the economy, DA? Those, those are just examples of how it would avoid the net benefit. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna talk about is just some miscellaneous tips on research for the 2NR and defending your absentist ads. First, after each tournament or before the tournament, you should go on the wiki and you should look at what everyone's blocks are to like your favorite disad. So let's say you really like the Iran disad. Um, even if people, some people don't upload their 1ARs to the wiki and that's sad. Um, but if people don't, you should email judges that you know, you should email competitors that you know, uh, and you should ask for, um, uh, all right. um, and you should ask for their documents. You should ask if, if there are prominent schools like Greenhill and Harvard Westlake that are reading this app, you should be like, hey, what's the Harvard Westlake 1AR against this disad? Uh, you should figure out what the best cards are against your disad and compile all of that. So research and scouting, super important. What you should do, what should you do next? Two, uh, look at the authors. Um, if they have a specific, if there's like this one guy everyone is citing and he writes the best article to your DA, cut a bunch of author indicts against him if he's a bad author. Uh, look at the authors they're citing. If you're, if the link turn card is like, no, fossil fuel subsidies uh, boost the economy against the econ DA, you want to look at like, well, what's the study that they're citing? What's its scope? What's its sample size? And you want to have your 2NR blocks ready on like, okay, their link turn, it's about this study. It was done in the 1980s. It included 10 companies. Uh, the results were not statistically significant, right? Um, so you want to be real on the up and up about what, uh, implicit argument or citation, uh, what, what the AF cards are citing. And if there's like a common study that disproves your link, chances are um, different authors, like even if the AF reads a, a link turn card from a different author, that author will be talking about that one study that's a link turn to your DA. So you wanna like block out those effective studies. Um, fourth, uh, look at the args that they're making. So if the counterplant, if the AF card against the like econ disad in fossil fuels um, makes the argument that like uh, it's a renewable shift that will boost the economy if you get rid of fossil fuels, have a block ready to go on like why the shift to renewables doesn't happen. So even if you don't have answers to the specific card, you have a twin R block ready to go. Like that's just like no renewable shift. Um, and so uh, you can read that against cards who presume a renewable shift. Um, because a lot of cards will make assumptions and you can target those assumptions and refute them. Great. That concludes the file building and advantage counter plans lecture. I hope everyone walks away with a like good understanding of what the principle behind advantage counter plans is. Um, and then some good tips and tricks for how to effectively run them. And hopefully you are encouraged to utilize advantage counter plans a lot more than they are currently utilized in the status quo. Uh, you're free to go. Um, if you have questions, you can PM me. I'm gonna stay for like another two minutes, um, but you are free to go have lunch. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Of course.
Okay, I'm gonna head out, eat lunch. Uh, goodbye, it's fun having y'all.